Here I've got a nice geometry problem. So let's say we've got two circles of radius one and they are tangent to each other at this point right here. Furthermore, they share a horizontal tangent line which I've drawn down in the bottom. And our goal is to determine what the side length of this orange square is. So obviously along the way, we're probably going to need to find the side length of this yellow square as well. So notice this yellow square has been inscribed between the horizontal line and the two circles. And then our orange square has been inscribed between this yellow square and the two circles. And what's nice about this is we don't have to do anything fancier than just the Pythagorean theorem a couple of times. Okay, so let's get to it. So let's go over to this left circle, although you could do this with any of the circles, and draw a center point, and then draw a radius from that center to this intersection point with the yellow square. So by our given, we know that length is one. Now that we've included that radius, we want to build a right triangle using this as the hypotenuse. So I'll drop a vertical line down here and a horizontal line across, those intersecting at a right angle. Now we need to find the measurement of the height of this triangle and the base of this triangle. Well, notice the height of this triangle will be one minus the length of this square. And that's just because we can take the length of this square and transpose it over and notice that we complete another radius of the circle. So in other words, this distance plus this distance must be one, but this distance is the length of the square. Well, we might as well give that a name. So I'll denote that by X and I'll just put like a yellow square with an X in it to show that. Okay, well, all of that says that this length right here is one minus X. Okay, well, what about this distance right here? Well, that's a little bit trickier. Notice if we were to draw another radius of the circle up here, again, that's gonna be length one, and then transpose this point vertically up, we see that we're one minus half the length of this square given that the vertical line going through these two circles is gonna split that square in half. So just to summarize that, here we have one minus x over two. But now by the Pythagorean theorem, we can easily build an equation for x. Notice we have one minus x squared plus one minus x over two squared is equal to one squared, but that's just one. Now that's gonna give us a quadratic formula that we can solve for x. I wanna simplify it a little bit first. I'm gonna multiply this whole thing by four. So multiplying that whole thing by four will give me four times one minus x quantity squared plus two minus x quantity squared. Notice if I bring the four into this thing that's being squared, I need to take its square root, so I turn it into two. That gives me two times one and two times x over two. That cancels that. And then I have four over there on the right-hand side of the equation. So multiplying this out, we'll get four x squared minus eight x plus four. And then multiplying this out will give us x squared minus four x plus four. Then we have that's equal to four. So we can start simplifying. So notice this four and this four will cancel. And then we'll have four x squared plus x squared. That gives us 5x squared minus, let's see, 8x minus 4x, that's going to be minus 12x, and then finally plus 4 equals 0. Now this might seem like we need to use the quadratic formula, but this is in fact factorable. This factors as 5x minus 2 times x minus 2. Great. So that tells us that x is equal to two over five or x is equal to two. Okay, well, given the fact that we're sandwiching this yellow square in between two circles of radius one, that means it's impossible for the side length of that square to be two. So in other words, we know that the side length of this square must be two over five. And that actually sets us up quite well 
to do almost exactly the same thing on this other circle in order to find the side length of this orange square. We'll start at the center of this circle, but now we'll draw a radius down to this orange square that has a red boundary. We know that has length one because it's a radius of the circle. And now we can complete a right triangle out of that by pushing down a vertical line and across a horizontal line. And now we need to measure the height of this triangle and the base of this triangle. So notice the height of this triangle will be one minus two fifths. So it's gonna be one because we start with the entire radius of the circle. Then we need to subtract off this side length that we found for the yellow square, which was two fifths over there. And now we need to subtract off the side length for this orange square, which I'll maybe call Y. So I'll denote that up here by just saying that we have y in the square. That's the side length of this guy right here. Okay, so that obviously simplifies a little bit. That'll simplify to 3 over 5 minus y. Now let's see what we have here. So just like we had in this base, we'll have the same thing for this. It'll be 1 minus y over 2. Now we can use the Pythagorean theorem one more time. So we have 3 over 5 minus y quantity squared plus 1 minus y over 2 quantity squared equals 1 squared, which is 1. Now we're going to play the same game that we did above. This time we're going to multiply both sides by 25 times 4 or 100, and that's so that we can clear the denominators. Okay, so we'll multiply this by 100, bring it inside the square, means we're really multiplying this by 10 and this by 10. That means here we have 6 minus 10y squared. Same thing goes here. Multiplying this by 100, if we bring it inside the square, it's like multiplying by 10. We have 10 minus 5y quantity squared equals 100. And now we've got a quadratic equation that we can solve for y. So I'll spare you the details. All you do is multiply this all the way, all the way out and use the quadratic formula. Here we'll get y is equal to 2 over 25 times the quantity 11 plus or minus 2 times the square root of 19. But in fact, we'll throw away the 11 plus 2 times the square root of 19 because that'll give us a too big of a square and keep 11 minus 2 times the square root of 19. And so in the end, this is the side length of our orange square which we're going for. And that's a good place to stop.